Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 1 to the course of rings and modules. So, today we are going to discuss about the definition of ring and then we will give lots of examples and um, slowly then we will move on towards in the consequent lectures to the ring homomorphism and talk about ideas and so on. So, today uh, the we will talk about mainly various examples of ring theory and we will uh, give lots of uh, examples and define what is a ring. So, group theory is a uh, prerequisite for this course and we will assume the basic group theory for this course. So, let us start. So, before giving you the um, formal definition of ring theory, uh, I will try to uh, just recall what is the definition of group and then slowly develop the theory. So, let us recall what is the definition of group. So, a group is nothing but a set together with a binary operation. So, what is a group? So, a group is a non-empty set G together with a binary operation. Let me denote it by denote this operation by this addition uh, symbol plus. So, this G together with a binary operation addition uh, which satisfies the pro following property which satisfies the following properties. What are the three properties we know? The first one is that it is associative, then the second one is the existence of identity. So, it has identity element and the third one is that every element has an inverse. So, every element has inverse. So, if a group is nothing but a non-empty set G together with a binary operation plus which satisfies these three following properties, then it is called a group. Then G with respect to this operation is called a group. This we already know from your previous group theory course. And uh, you know examples of groups also. So, what examples usually we know? So, for example, the most common examples are the ring of in uh, sorry the group of integers. So, z with respect to addition and then uh, rational numbers with respect to addition and then real numbers with respect to addition and complex numbers with respect to addition. All these are groups. These are examples of groups. So, we have seen uh, the definition, we have just recalled the definition of group and seen the examples. Now, if you look into uh, before giving you the formal uh, definition of ring, let me give you uh, some examples and then try to motivate you towards the definition of a ring. So, let us look into the first example of group which is nothing but this uh, group of integers with respect to addition operation. 
But if you look into this uh, integers, uh, we can see that there is another binary operation is there in integers. What is that? That is the multiplication operation. So, if you to choose two integers and then multiply again you will get an integer. So, let us see with uh, respect to this multiplication operation what are the properties that this uh, z satisfies. So, um, first we will investigating, first we are investigating this z plus. So, examples of rings though I have not yet defined rings, but I am trying to give you some examples which will motivate you towards the definition of ring. So, the first one is z. So, you can notice that of course, z with respect to addition is a group we have we know. In fact, it is mo much more than a group, it is in fact an abelian group. So, this is an abelian group. And then we can have that we have another binary operation we can see that we have another binary operation on z that is multiplication operation. So, this is deno I am denoting this operation by dot. And you can see that this multiplication operation has the following properties. What are these properties? So, this multiplication operation is also associative. So, this is associative and then we have this identity element. What is that identity? Multiplicative identity. That means, you can see that if I multiply any integer with 1 and then I will get back that integer. This is true for all A belongs to Z. So, 1 is the multiplicative identity, this is the multiplicative identity So, then you can ask whether it forms a group with respect to multiplication or not, but you can see that uh, the inverse of an element does not exist, the multiplicative inverse. So, if you choose any integer. Uh, the inverse multiplicative inverse of that integer does not exist. So, you can see that uh, this z with respect to multiplication does not form a group, but it has another binary this operation multiplication which is associated and it has, has the multiplicative identity as well. So, but we know that z with respect to multiplication is not a group as as it does not have as if as the element does not have multiplicative inverse as the elements of z does not have multiplicative inverse. So, we have seen that though apart from this addition operation, there is another operation which is I have multiplication operation and with respect to this multiplication operation, this is associative and it has multiplicative identity, but it is not a group because it is relevant does not have an inverse multiplicative inverse. Now, let us move on to this uh, rationals. So, here if you go to this uh, rationals, then also we know that this rationals with respect to addition is an abelian group. But again in rationals also we have this multiplication operation another binary operation we are having. So, in Q we have another binary operation. So, multiplication is another binary operation. And we can see that it also satisfies some common properties. For example, this multiplication is associative and then we are having that uh, multiplicative identity exist. So, multiplicative identity which is nothing but 1 exist. 
but again you can see that this q with respect to multiplication doesn't form a group because though every non zero element has a multiplicative inverse but the zero element doesn't have a multiplicative inverse so but q with respect to multiplication is not a group as the zero element as this element zero doesn't have a multiplicative inverse but whereas every non zero element of q has multiplicative inverse but it um, for us it is enough that q is also having another binary operation which is associative and it has the multiplicative identity now if you go on and then look into this uh, real numbers and or this uh, um, complex numbers then you can see that in both the cases there are two binary operations so in both the cases there are two binary operation one is the addition operation and one and that is the multiplication operation and with respect to addition it is abelian group and with respect to multiplication there are three that two properties are satisfied one is that associative and then um, multiplicative identity and again if you look into like uh, similar to the rationals if you consider all the non zero or real numbers or non zero complex numbers then they have multiplicative inverse so we can conclude that all the non zero rationals with respect to multiplication and then all the non zero real numbers with respect to multiplication and all the non zero complex numbers with respect to multiplication forms a group so without the zero element they are having a group structure but if i put zero then zero doesn't have a multiplicative inverse so they are not forming a group with respect to multiplication but if i omit zero then they are forming a group so we can see that okay these are uh, these numbers uh, integers uh, rationals reals complex where we have seen each of them are having two binary operation addition multiplication with respect to addition it is an abelian group and this multiplication operation is associative and there exists multiplicative identity now let's move on and see some more examples so if you now look into this matrices so let us consider um, m m n cross n r what is this this denote the set of all n cross on matrices with entries in the real number r so this is the set of all n cross n matrices with entries from real numbers so now if you look uh, into this set then you can see that with if i define the consider the uh, addition of two matrices then with respect to this addition operation this is an abelian group so this set with respect to addition operation is an abelian group where remember this addition that i have written here 
is the addition of two matrices. Now, we can see that apart from this addition operation, there is another operation that is the multiplication operation. So, if you take two n cross n matrices and then multiply uh, them, then you will again get a n cross n matrix. So, we have another binary operation that is matrix multiplication. So, this is multiplication of matrices. You know this how to multiply two matrices and you can again see that this um, operation, this multiplication of operation is associative. And again I have the existence of identity element and what is the identity element here? It is nothing but the identity matrix because if I multiply any matrix with the identity matrix, I will get back that matrix only. So, here the identity element is nothing but the identity matrix. So, 1 on the diagonals and 0 and the rest of the entries. This is the multiplicative identity. So, identity is here, associativity is there. So, then we can ask whether the inverse of every matrix exists or not, multiplicative inverse and we know that not every matrix is invertible. So, again in this case also it is not forming a group with respect to multiplication. So, but it is not a group with respect to multiplication as not every matrix has multiplicative inverse. So, apart from these numbers, now we have seen another example which was the example of matrices. And now let us move on to the next example. So, let us denote by Rx. So, what is Rx? Rx is nothing but the set of all polynomials with indeterminant x and coefficients from the real numbers. So, this is the set of all polynomials uh, in indeterminant x with coefficients from real number. So, you know what are the polynomials and then you can see that there are again this addition of two polynomials is there. Uh, this is a binary operation and with respect to that it is an abelian group. So, let how this addition of two operation is defined. So, let f x equal to a naught plus a 1 x plus a n x to the power n where a i are real numbers and g x is another polynomial say b naught plus b 1 x plus b n x to the power n where these b i is are real numbers. So, if some of the coefficient is 0 then that term is not there. So, these are the two polynomials then we define the addition of two polynomials. So, how do I define the addition? So, define addition that I denote by plus. So, this is f x plus g x is nothing but we uh, do it component wise like uh, this will be a naught plus b naught and then a 1 plus b 1 x so on plus a n plus b n x to the power n. So, you can verify that with respect to this addition operation this R x is in fact an abelian group. So, this R x with respect to addition is an abelian group. This we have seen and then um, and what is the um, additive identity here? The constant polynomial 0 with additive identity constant polynomial 
0. The 0 polynomial is the additive identity and we have this multiplication of two polynomials how we define the multiplication. So, def we define the multiplication using the distributive law. So, define multiplication again denoted by dot. So, f x dot g x is nothing but. So, this is um, a naught plus a 1 x plus a n x to the power n dot b naught plus b 1 x plus b n x to the power n. So, now if I multiply, so I will first multiply a naught with this whole polynomial then a 1 x with this thing and then uh, group together the same um, degree uh, elements. So, that the constant term I will get a naught b naught and then I the coefficient of x in this multiplication will be nothing but a naught b 1 x and then another term will be if I multiply b naught with a 1. So, that will be plus a 1 b naught x and then what will be the coefficient of x square it will be coming from a naught multiplied with b 2 plus a 1 multiplied with b 1 and then a 2 multiplied with b naught. This is the coefficient of x square and like in this way you can um, find out the other terms. So, more generally what we can write the coefficient. So, the coefficient of x to the power k is nothing but summation of a i b k minus i i from 0 to k. So, this will be the coefficient of x to the power k in the multiplication of these two polynomial f x and g x. And then you can see that this multiplication is again a binary operation of course, and it is this multiplication is associative. And we have the multiplicative identity which is nothing but the constant polynomial 1. So, multiplica as multiplication is associative So, multiplication is associative and I have the multiplicative identity is nothing but the constant polynomial 1. So, we have uh, given a uh, couple of examples. Now, the next example that I would like to give you. So, let us consider C r what is this C r? This is nothing but the set of all continuous functions. So, set of all continuous functions from r to r. So, here also I can define the addition. So, how this addition is defined? Addition operation. So, addition of two continuous function I define it point wise. So, this is nothing but so sorry. So, f and g are two continuous functions. So, I am defining f plus g x is nothing but f of x plus g of x for all x in R. This is how I have defined the addition and you can verify that this set with respect to addition is an abelian group and not only that I have this multiplication operation also. So, what is the multiplication how we define? So, product of two polynomials I am again defining that uh, point wise. So, this is f x into g x. So, you can see that this dot denotes the multiplication of two functions where this dot is nothing but the multiplication of two real numbers because f of x is a real number and g of x is a real number. So, this is I am using the same notation dot for both the multiplication, but here it is the multiplication of two continuous functions and here this is the multiplication of two real numbers. Similarly, here also this plus denotes the addition of two continuous functions. Uh, here this addition is the addition of real numbers. So, this is for all x belongs to R. 
then you can see that multiplication is associative and we have this one constant function 1 is the multiplicative identity. So, here again uh, we can see that not every continuous function has a multiplicative inverse. So, it is not forming a group, but of course, these other two properties are there. So, now I will have one more example that is nothing but the this z quotient and z that uh, congruence z congruence modulo uh, congruence mod n the congruence classes. So, you can see that this is an abelian group with respect to addition. So, how I define the addition? So, here if I denote say L bar plus M bar is nothing but L plus M bar and we have another binary operation that is multiplication. So, how this multiplication is defined? So, here you can see that I define the multiplication of two congruence classes as nothing but L dot M and take the corresponding congruence class. Again, this multiplication is associative and one bar is the multiplicative identity. So, here multiplication is associative and one bar is the multiplicative identity. So, I have given enough examples. Now, you can see there is something common in all the examples that we have a set with respect to one binary operation that we are calling addition. It is an abelian group. There is another binary operation that we are calling it to be the multiplication operation and with respect to that multiplication operation we have seen that it is uh, this multiplication operation is associative and there exists multiplicative identity. Then people thought about why to study them individually. Let us define something in an abstract way for any arbitrary set which is having two operations satisfying all this property call it as a ring and then study that abstract set with this abstract operations and study it in general and that will give you in a one way uh, that uh, instead of individually studying it each of them you can study it at a same time what are the prop what are all the properties that all these examples will satisfy so that is how the definition of ring came into picture so let me now give you the definition of ring so a ring R is a set with two binary operation say addition and multiplication. So, this addition is de denoted by uh, plus. So, addition and dot denotes the multiplication. So, we have two binary operations addition and multiplication which satisfies the following conditions which satisfies the following conditions. So, what are the conditions? The first condition is that R with respect to addition is an abelian group. The second one is that multiplication operation is associative. Multiplication is associative what does that mean that means that a dot b dot c is same as a dot b dot c 
for all a b c in r so it doesn't matter whether i am first multiplying b and c and then multiplying a i will get the same thing if i first multiply a and b and then multiply c and the third property is multiplicative identity exist multiplicative identity exist and is denoted by is denoted by 1 and the fourth one is that since we are having two operations so these two operations should be compatible so there is this distributive law so between these two hmm, operation so distributive law is there and what is this distributive law says? So, this says that a plus b dot c is same as a dot c plus b dot c and a dot b plus c is same as a dot b plus a dot c. This is true for all a, b, c in R. So, what is a ring R? A ring R is nothing but a set with two binary operations addition and multiplication and with respect to addition operation it is an abelian group and multiplication operation satisfies this associativity property and multiplication there is exist a multiplicative identity that we denote by one and distributive law is also satisfied. Now all the examples if you go previously I have given so let us go back quickly. So, here you can see that z we are having two uh, binary operations addition and multiplication and satisfies the properties that I have defined for uh, ring definition of ring then q then r c and then this matrices also you can see uh, is satisfied polynomial rings and then the continuous functions all of them satisfies these properties. So, that is how we have motivated you with the examples and given you the formal definition of ring. So, now here one more thing that I would like to stress here this addition operation that I have said here this addition that I have denoted here. So, this is just a notation ok. So, it depends on which set we are choosing then this addition will depend on how we are defining it. For example, for real numbers it is just the addition of two real numbers, but for matrices it is this addition denotes the addition of two matrices. Similarly, this multiplication is again a notation it is depends on which set we are choosing and how we are defining the multiplication. So, do not get confused with this plus and dot it does not mean that addition and multiplication of real numbers or integers or rationals like thing, but it depends on which set we are choosing and uh, how this operation is defined. Similarly, I would like to mention here that this multiplicative identity that I have de de denoted by 1. So, this 1 is a symbol. So, for integers it is the number 1 whereas for matrices we have seen it is nothing but the identity matrix this one is nothing but for matrices was the i was a matrix is not this number 1 and for polynomial it was the constant polynomial and for continuous function it was again the continuous function constant function 1 so again this is just a symbol to denote and this abelian group has identity. So, this additive identity we denote by. So, let me just say it here additive identity is denoted by 0. Again, this is a symbol because for matrices, this is the 0 matrix, and for polynomials, it is the constant polynomial 0, and for numbers, it is the number 0. So, again this is just a symbol it varies which set we are considering and what is the identity there. So, with this I will finish today's lecture. These are the references that I have used for today's lecture and thank you.